The Council for Dredging and Marine Construction Safety presents Hand Safety for the Dredging and Marine Construction Industry. We all need a fully functional pair of hands, not only to do our jobs, but for all parts of life. But the hands we rely on are vulnerable. A single accident can leave them permanently injured, making even simple tasks difficult. And hand injuries are common. A recent United States Department of Labor report cited that over 110,000 lost time hand injuries occurred in a one-year period with an average of six days away from work. That's 660,000 lost work days due to hand injuries. Nearly 70% of workers who experienced hand injuries were not wearing gloves. Hand injuries are the second most common injury on the job, only surpassed by back and soft tissue injuries. Working on dredges and support vessels in the dredging industry pose special risk for hand injuries from machinery and equipment, lines and cables, to tools, chemicals, and pinch points, hand hazards can be found in most every corner and space on a dredge and at marine construction sites. However, all hand injuries are preventable with the right knowledge and the proper actions. First, you need to be aware of the potential hazards to your hands for any job you are performing. Second, you need to put proper safety procedures into practice to eliminate these hazards. And finally, you need to stay aware and alert to potential hazards and your own actions until the job is done. When working, no tool is as useful as your own pair of hands. We use them in a myriad of ways to perform a multitude of tasks. The fact that hands are used so universally may be one reason there is so much potential for an accident or injury. Realistically, almost any job on the dredge has the potential for a hand injury due to improper hand placement, pinch points, improper tool usage, or a sharp edge on a surface. The risks are increased by working too quickly, inattention, or not remaining aware of hand placement or potential hazards. Even something as routine as walking through a hatch or door can cause a hand injury if you aren't paying attention. Often, workers are injured by positioning hands, arms, or bodies into harm's way or wearing loose clothing which can get caught in moving machinery. Something as simple as a loose shirt sleeve can result in amputation of a finger, hand or arm, or even death. Keep your work clothes tidy, tucked in, and fitting snugly. Similarly, gloves should not be worn when working with rotating equipment, such as bench grinders or drill presses, which can get caught in moving machinery dragging hands and fingers into the grinding wheel or drill bit. Remove bracelets and other jewelry before starting work. This is usually a mandatory company requirement, so check where you work. Use caution around moving equipment, making sure all machine guards are in place and that you keep your hands clear of moving parts. Hand and power tools also present hazards. An angle grinder can cause severe injuries if used improperly. Many injuries are caused when a wrench slips, and hammers are notorious for smashing hands and fingers. Lifting operations, whether they involve a crane, winch, or objects simply lifted by hand, present the potential for hand injuries. Focus on keeping your hands away from any position where they can be pinched or crushed. Exposure to chemicals may harm the hands, leading to burns, skin rashes, or other health issues. Burns can also occur when the hands are exposed to heated equipment, surfaces, or a fire such as when welding, cutting, or grinding. Electrical shocks and their resulting burns are another potential source of hand injuries. A frayed cord is often enough to provide a shock. This list of hazards and potential impacts is far from complete. 
Talk with your supervisor or safety personnel about the hazards and risk factors at your work site. It's important to be aware of all the hazards to your hands you may face. Now, let's focus on methods to prevent hand injuries. You can begin simply by being alert and aware. As you begin work on the dredge or construction site, it is easy to forget about your hands and take for granted that they won't be injured, even as you use them for a variety of tasks. Fight this tendency to lose focus. Stay aware and conscious of how you are using your hands and where you are placing them. Remember, one slip can lead to a lifetime of regret. Heed all warning signs, markings, and tags. They are there for a reason and their message applies to you. Because hand injuries are possible when performing most jobs, include hand safety and injury prevention in any pre-job plan. Whether it is a detailed analysis of a tricky or unfamiliar job, or a simple talk through of a task you've completed many times before. Hand safety should always be included and discussed in every JSA, Job Safety Analysis. Be sure to mitigate hand safety hazards identified in a JSA by protecting yourself through the use of personal protective equipment, or PPE. Wearing work gloves is often enough to prevent or minimize injuries such as lacerations, pinches, burns, or electrical shocks. Be sure to use the gloves required by your company's policies for the job you are assigned. Ask your supervisor if you have any questions or concerns about the type of protection you will be using. General purpose work gloves are suitable for many jobs. They are often made with a neoprene palm to help protect against cuts, abrasion, and punctures. Heavier leather palm gloves are a good selection when working with cables or other objects that could present a cutting hazard to fingers and palms. Close-fitting line handling gloves can help prevent hand abrasions and rope burns and prevent slippage when working with lines or ropes. For handling any chemicals, follow requirements pertaining to glove use and any other elements of PPE listed on the product warning label or the safety data sheet, SDS, for the chemical. An SDS should be available for each chemical used at the workplace. Avoid touching gloves that have contacted chemicals with your bare hands or any other exposed body part. Hot work, such as welding, requires special leather gloves that can withstand high temperatures. When working with electrically energized equipment, you should wear voltage-rated electrical gloves for protection against an arc flash injury. When handling or preparing food, or cleaning or performing housekeeping tasks, wear disposable gloves. This will help to prevent the spread of infections such as colds, flus, and staph infections, including MRSA. No matter what type of hand protection you are using, ensure that it's in good condition. Worn or tattered gloves may not protect your hands. Never work with oil or any slippery substances on your gloves. This may cause you to lose your grip on a tool, leading to an accident or an injury. Get fresh gloves whenever they are needed. Don't put your hands at risk. Finally, remember to wash your hands thoroughly after a potential chemical exposure or after completing any dirty job, even if you were well protected by gloves. This will help to prevent any possible contamination or infection. Check with your supervisor to determine your company's policies on the availability and use of gloves at your workplace. While PPE is indispensable, you need to take additional measures to protect your hands from injury. Practicing proper hand placement on every job is another essential step. Placing your hands in the right place will help you avoid caught between incidents, pinch points, and other hazards, such as being pulled into machinery or having a finger amputated by a sharp moving part. 
Connecting floating pipeline can be one of the more hazardous tasks in the dredging industry. This is especially true in rough or choppy seas. It is imperative to keep your hands clear of the ball joints, lock rings, and locking pins while making or breaking the connection. In rough waters, the pipeline pontoons can bounce and move erratically. A hand or finger caught between colliding pipe connections does not stand a chance. Keep hands clear of all lines used to pull the pipe joints together when making or breaking connections. Also, stay clear of the line used to release or engage the locking ring. You should have all the tools required, such as pry bars, ring bars, and keepers readily available to safely accomplish this task. Always know the correct hand placements on tools and equipment, and be aware of where you are placing your hands. Keep in mind that there is a proper hand placement for every job. Proper hand placement is crucial when moving equipment or baskets with the use of a crane or other mechanical lifting device. Unfortunately, caught between hand injuries are all too common in the dredging industry and marine construction industries. Some companies have even developed hands-free lifting policies and procedures. These procedures require the use of tag lines to control the movement of elevated loads. Crew members are prohibited from touching the load or using their hands on the load when it is elevated. When using a tool, make sure that your hands or fingers will not contact or get pinched against a nearby object, fixture, or any sharp or heated surfaces. Never place your hands or fingers between contact surfaces or machine parts. Using the proper methods for working with tools will also help to protect your hands. Whether you are using a hand or power tool, know the tool's proper operating procedures and follow them. Keep all tools in good repair by performing regular maintenance. Tools should be stored in dedicated areas, bins, or boxes. Keep any sharp edges away from potential contact by enclosing or protecting them. Inspect each tool for damage before use. Tag any damaged tools and remove them from service. Never use a damaged tool for any reason. Damaged tools present serious safety hazards. Be sure to use the right tool for the job. It may be tempting to use a screwdriver as a wedge, maul, or chisel, but it is not designed for these purposes. The screwdriver could slip or its handle could easily shatter, sending fragments toward the user or other employees. Tool size also matters. A screwdriver that is too large or small is apt to slip or cam out of the screw and injure a finger or hand. Use extra caution any time you work with tools that can crush your hands, such as a hammer. Pinch your hands, such as a wrench. Cut your hands, such as a chisel. Pierce your hands, such as a drill. Or cause serious abrasions from tools, such as a sander or grinder. Sledgehammers present serious risk for crushing a hand or foot, or striking a coworker. If a sledgehammer is called for, select the smallest, lightest hammer that will effectively do the job. A lighter, smaller hammer is easier to control. Some companies do not allow the use of knives on the job, as knives have led to many accidents. Alternative cutting tools designed for safety are used instead, such as snips to cut zip ties. Check with your supervisor for the policies in force at your workplace. When you do have to use a knife, always cut in a direction away from your body. Whether you are working in a kitchen or out on the deck, make sure the blades of any cutting tool you use are sharp. Dull blades are more likely to slip and may require extra force to cut, resulting in an accident. Also direct tools away from your body and away from aisles, walkways, or coworkers working in close proximity. Tools and other equipment powered by electricity can shock you, in some cases, severely. Check cords and plugs carefully before plugging in a power tool. 
Never use a tool with any frays or broken places in its electrical insulation. Always use a three-wire cord plugged into a grounded receptacle when using electrically powered tools. Never use a tool in which the grounding pin on the plug has been removed. Connect equipment to a power source only when you are about to do a job. And keep your hands and fingers away from the on, off, or power switch until you are ready to begin. Never use the locking device on a hand power tool trigger. A slip of the hands could send the locked tool on a dangerous, out of control journey. When using a power tool or any type of equipment, monitor not only your hand placement, but your foot placement and stance as well. Secure work materials, such as a length of pipe with a clamp or vise. This will not only keep the materials from moving, it will allow you to use both hands to operate the tool safely. Also, make sure the lighting is adequate before using or servicing equipment. You should be able to easily recognize if a machine is running and see any visible moving parts. Disconnect and lock out equipment from its power source before servicing or cleaning it, or changing components such as blades, bits, or cutters. Know and follow the lockout tagout procedures in force at the workplace for maintaining or servicing equipment and machines. This will prevent injuries from fans, blades, or other moving parts. Machine guards provide protection from belts, blades, gears, shafts, and other moving parts, as well as chips or sparks caused by equipment operations. Do not remove machine guards unless it is required to perform maintenance on the equipment. Be sure to reinstall the machine guards as soon as the maintenance is completed. Never operate equipment with missing or faulty machine guards. Lines are one of the most used of all tools in the dredging and marine construction industry. They are strong and durable when used properly, but without a doubt, some of the most serious and disabling hand injuries can result from improper line handling techniques. Situational awareness is required at all times when handling lines. Individuals must be continually aware of their surroundings, including the position of working lines, hand placement, and vessel movement. When tying off deck lines, keep hands well away from deck fittings. Work the line from a safe distance. The surge from a wake, wave, or sudden movement of the tug, barge, or dredge could pull your hand in between the line and the bit. Never put your hand or fingers between the line and any bit. If you are trying to place a line on a bit, use an open palm to position the line. Fingers and hands have been known to be crushed or lost during this crucial step. When working with cables, always wear hand protection to avoid being cut by any sharp burrs or broken wires. When placing or removing the deck cable eye on the bit or kevel, make sure there is enough slack in the cable to safely allow it to be removed from the deck fitting. As with all cables, never place your hands or fingers on the inside of the eye and between the cable and the bit. A sudden movement of the vessel will ensure a trip to the emergency room. A tugger winch is often used on a dredge to reduce the need to manually handle deck wires. The deck hand will need to ensure that they are wearing gloves during this task. As the deck hand is paying in cable, he or she must continually keep their eyes on the task at hand. Keep your hands clear of the winch drum when handling lines. The capstan is a powerful piece of equipment that can be found on tugs and is used to haul in or tension lines. Lines can be wrapped around the drum of the capstan as the drum rotates to pull in or tighten working lines. Never put hands or fingers on the line wrapped on the capstan drum. A hand or finger caught between the line and the drum could be crushed or even severed. It's also important to keep a long lead when working a capstan line. If the line slips on the drum, it could pull your hands or fingers into the drum.
Workers like you, who work with dredges and marine construction equipment, have the greatest impact on the industry's effort to eliminate hand injuries. With a few simple steps, you can do your part to keep your hands safe and prevent accidents that could injure others as well. Your first contribution is to be knowledgeable and aware. All personnel should know and follow procedures for preventing hand injuries on every job. Remain alert to pinch points and caught between hazards and carefully monitor your hand placement at all times. Inspect all equipment thoroughly. Be aware of the dangers of damaged or poorly selected equipment. Use proper safety procedures to avoid the moving parts of machines. When you see unsafe conditions or a failure to follow procedures, stop the job and take corrective action. Now, here are a few additional tips. You are much more likely to injure yourself with a hand or power tool when frustrated or trying to force things. Always take your time when performing a job. Rushing also puts you at greater risk for an injury. And how about stretching? You may be used to stretching your body before or after physical activity. The hands, fingers, and wrists are susceptible to injuries caused by factors such as excessive force, vibration, or repetition. Even personnel who work in an office or on a computer are at risk due to prolonged or static postures and the repetitive tasks involved in this kind of work. Repetitive motion may inflame tendons in the wrist and place pressure on the nerves leading to hand and wrist discomfort. And it is not only office workers who are susceptible to this type of injury. Anytime you make the same or similar motions with your hands or wrists for an extended period of time, you may be at risk. You can help to prevent this discomfort by moving and stretching on a regular basis, say every 15 to 30 minutes. Stretch and shake down your hands, wrists, and fingers and keep them loose by continuing to stretch at frequent intervals throughout the day. It's amazing the good a little preventive exercising of your hands can do. It is the responsibility of all personnel to actively participate in the prevention of hand injuries. This means incorporating hand safety into every job, striving to maintain awareness and improve procedures until serious hand injuries in the workplace are a thing of the past.